This is Chuck Johnson, and I'm here to show you. Okay, so for today's show, we're gonna be dealing with knife defense. So just to let you guys know, when I first decided to do a show on knife defense, maybe three, four months ago, I went around to a lot of different people I know in the martial arts community, a lot of different people I know who get into street fights, a lot of different people I know who've actually been stabbed. And um, just to see, you know, put the idea to them and to say, I wanna do a show on knives and to see what you think. And almost universally, right off the bat, everybody said, don't do it. The reason being is because when it comes to knife defense, there's so many different philosophies out there. There's so many different situations that can occur. You know, there's so many different variables that can come into play. And everyone said, basically, there's just too many different variables and things to take into account. And you can't cover all of them in a five minute show. And if you try, all those people who like criticizing you and all those people who like criticizing your show are just gonna use it as a reason to just rip you apart. But here I am anyway. Why? Because the fact of the matter is, I refuse to believe that there's nothing that I can give to the average untrained person to help them through a very real and very dangerous situation, okay? So what I'm about to show you is simply the best advice that I have to give. If you don't like it, that's totally cool and I'm not gonna get mad at you guys if you wanna check out other people's videos. There's a lot of good stuff out there on knife defense and I actually encourage you to check out as much as you can because you know what? The more you know, the better off you are, okay? So anyway, let's take a look. Okay, so as I said before, there's a lot of good stuff out there on knife defense, lots of experts, a lot of good stuff you can see on YouTube. So I encourage you to just go ahead and take a look. Now the reason that I didn't wanna use a lot of those techniques for the show is because quite frankly, you gotta be damn good to use them, okay? The fact of the matter is your timing needs to be on point. So, you know, for example, if Dean comes in with a straight thrust here, boom, you know, I can block it this way, or if he comes in with an overthread thrust, I can trap him up this way. But the fact of the matter is, if I mess that up, if I come in and then my timing isn't right, I get cut. My timing isn't good here, boom, and I get cut, okay? And it's only gonna take one good cut like that to take away one or possibly both of your primary tools. And you're gonna be bleeding like crazy, especially because you've got adrenaline in your system. So what I recommend instead is that you find and use absolutely whatever you can to get in between you and that knife, and I mean anything. You get a chair, get that in between you. If there's a table around, get on the other side of the table. Just keep them on the other side of the table. Hmm? It could even be just some random guy. Maybe Nick's on the random guy. I don't, random guy's not a good idea. Being in a big city like Tokyo, I personally almost always have a backpack with me, okay? So even if you're just out in the city or whatever and you just have a backpack and you know, you see the situation coming or whatever, they've got a knife, they're ready. If nothing else, use that to just block that blade and then run, okay? If you don't have a backpack, if you're a woman and you have a purse, use your purse. If you don't have a purse, if you have even just a magazine, roll up and use the magazine. Okay? Just basically use whatever you can to engage that blade without having to use any of your body parts. And if absolutely nothing else, if you have nothing else on you, kick off and then use your shoes. Okay? Now I know it seems like this is right out of a kung fu movie or something, but there's actually four reasons why I'd advocate using your shoes. So one is that the spot in the back that's kind of cupped out to accommodate your heel and your Achilles tendon gives you something that you can grip rather well, okay? Number two, if you're rocking size 12s like Chuck is, then you've got at least an extra foot of reach, okay? Which means you can keep your body at least one more foot away from that blade, okay? Reason number three, even the sharpest knives in the world don't cut very well through rubber. So if you can use the soles, you don't have to worry about it cutting, cutting it right in half and cutting you anyway. And number four, you know, except for certain parts in the South, everybody's wearing a pair when they leave their house. Okay? So let's say that Dean comes in with that knife, boom, boom, I hit him with the other one, and then I run. Okay? Let's say he comes in overhead, boom, boom, hit him with the other one and run. Okay? Now ladies, if all you got is a pair of high heels, even use your dog on high heels, okay? So he comes in with anything, boom, boom, bury the other one in his eye. Boom, bury it in his throat. 
Just whatever you have. If you got these, use these. So you can hook this way, you can hook this way. Hit him in the eye, hit him in the throat. Even if he blocks it, hit him wherever. Just take his attention away so you can run away. And then you've already got your heels off, so you should be able to go pretty fast, okay? In closing, guys, I really cannot stress to you enough how important it is that you avoid any kind of conflicts with somebody who has an edged weapon, okay? Now, the fact of the matter is, even if you're a big guy, even if you're a strong guy, even if you're a really well-trained martial artist, the fact of the matter is when you're messing with knives or other edged weapons, there's simply no room for mistakes. And a single mistake can, if it doesn't cost you your life, it can hurt you really, really badly, okay? So basically, my advice to you, number one, more than anything else, run, okay? If you can't run, talk your way out of it. You can't talk your way out of it, give them absolutely whatever it is that they want. Just do not engage unless you absolutely have to. And then if you're backed into a corner and you have no other recourse, then use whatever you can to just get in between you and that knife so that you can get away. Do whatever you can to just take their attention for a split second so you can bolt and get out from behind them, okay? Anyway, that's all the advice I have to give. Good luck, train, 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 and hopefully see you next time. Yes! <laughs>